Hi, I'm Alton, and today we're going to be installing the very thing that's over my left shoulder here. This is a Honeywell home thermostat system. I'm going to be replacing it with the Ecobee Smart Thermostat Premium. So first things first, when replacing your home thermostat for your HVAC system, uh, you want to cut the power to it. So you can go out to the garage, wherever your breaker box may be, or breaker panel, you can go there to cut the power to the source. Now, in my regard, I did not have to go there. I can go there to eliminate my whole HVAC system, or I can simply, I had to go up under the house to cut the power here. So once I've cut the power, I can go ahead and to remove, and there again, this is a Honeywell. So to remove the panel, all I gotta do, you can see there's a, well, you can see, but there's a, a little panel that pops right onto the portion connected to the wall. So I can go right where you see the split there and just twist, and this is just a flathead, small flathead. Uh, once I go and I twist, as you can see, I can simply twist and this front part pops off. Now, you've got a couple of rods there that go into there, so, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but um, yeah, so this pops right off, no other connections, no wires to detach, anything of that nature. Once you have that off, you're gonna see your wires here. Now, right along the bottom, you can see a couple of letters here. No, that is not the alphabet for you to teach your kids. That is simply to let you know where the wires go. So on the wiring, once you take the face cover off, you will expose your wiring. On your wiring, you have the blue, which is connected to C. That is just one that completes the circuit. You have your red, which is going to be power. Now that is connected to R. That also can be connected to RC as well. But in this regard, it is connected to R, which is power. When you roll over as well, you've got your white wire, which is going to be your heating. And of course, with your heating, you do have uh, it connected to W. Your yellow wire is going to be for your air conditioner. That's going to be connected to your Y. And then, of course, your green wire is going to be connected to your G. The green wire is for your fan. So that is all your connections. You've got your letters on the bottom. And, of course, you've got your wires, which will connect to those letters on the bottom, which tells you what to do as well. And each one is for something such as I mentioned, which is for the circuit of the vehicle, uh, of the, uh, not vehicle, but the HVAC system here. You would be C and blue, and then power, you would be red and R. And then, of course, you've got the green and the white and the yellow, as I mentioned before. So a couple items we're going to use that you will have to furnish yourself. One is just going to be a small flathead screwdriver. And the other one, I have a smaller handheld screwdriver here. And then along the bottom, I am going to use a Phillips rather than a flathead, but I can use either or. So I think the smaller one here is going to be the one. I'll go ahead and switch that out. But all you need is two flathead screwdrivers, or you can get away with a Phillips or you can do the flathead there again. That's all you need is just two screwdrivers. As you can see, this one's a little bit smaller, so I wouldn't be able to get the larger one in there. And then, of course, I could use either or on the larger screws there. So we'll go ahead and proceed with removing that. So once I'm here, I can remove each one of my wires. And the thing that I would encourage you to do as well is take a picture of this exactly like it is. So if you forget which wire goes where, you can come back, you've got a picture of it, and you can refer to that picture to make sure you get the wires back in their proper placement with the letters. So now that I have the power completely turned off, all I'm going to do is just go ahead and, and you don't have to release these completely. You can just turn them enough to just release the wire itself. And as you can see, I'm just going to continue to spin here. Let's just make sure this is disconnected. All right, so that's one. That's my blue wire. Here, we will go into the white. And all I'm doing is just unscrewing the small screw there. That will allow me to lift that off. And white there again was in W. The blue was in the spot of the C. We'll move over to the yellow.
and the yellow was in the slot of the Y. Gosh, it almost feels like I'm in grade school. Right. Next, we'll do the green, which is in the slot of the G. A Z for green. All right, so we've got that disconnected. And that is definitely an R, now that I see that right up top there. So I did have to finagle that a little bit to get that out. That was in a little bit tighter, but now that one is removed as well. So the next thing I have to do is go in and with the two screws here, just go in and release to take the plate off the wall and that's just gonna leave my wiring exposed. So that's completely removed. That's exactly what that will look like. So in the unboxing, of course, you have your thermostat, which is gonna be here. This will be your module, which this is, we're gonna set this on the wall. You have your component here. Now we would only need this if we did not have the C wire or the blue wire here, which is for the circuit. We would need this only if we did not have the C wire. We have a C wire, as you saw earlier when I was removing the wires, which was the blue wire. So I don't need this at all. We have our monitor, which is for the second room, which monitors the temperature there, relays it back to our main unit here. And then of course, this is how we're going to do the installation of the new unit. They do also provide screws for the unit. So this is what I'll be using to insert it into the wall as well. All right, so, so to make sure this fits as flush as possible, all I'm doing here is just evening out the areas of the wall around the hole to make sure it fits as flush as possible. Once I come back, I can easily, I just want my wires to, of course, extend through. Once I do that, I can see my measure here on the bottom that tells me that I have it correctly aligned. So the thing you'll notice is this has got a couple more connections, a couple more holes than what the other did in the way of lettering. Whereas the other only had, you know, a W, a C, or a Y. Here you've got Y1, you've got Y2, you've also got W1 and W2 as well. Now, one of the things we'll do is, this is a more educated, or this is a more high performance system of what than your system would be. Now, as you noticed on yours, W, Y, G, O. And then, of course, here you've got G, C, Y, 1. Now, Y, 1 and Y, 2, we're going to put the y, y, the y wire from our last thermostat, we're going to put it into Y, 1. Now, this is dual stage heating, dual stage cooling, which is the reason why you have dual stage heating, dual, st uh, dual stage heating is why you have Y1, Y2, and W1, W2. So that's the reason why you have the extra terminals. Now we're gonna put Y in Y1, W in W1. Now, of course, a couple of the other ones you won't need. So it's irrelevant to, to know what those are, so I won't go much into detail. If you only had those wires, you wanna put it back in the wire frame you had in the wire hole you had, which the Y wire would go into Y1, W would go into W1. RH is going to be your power wire for your boiling system. Notice we don't have an R here, we have an RC. So we're going to connect the R wire directly into the RC there. So we'll put R in the RC simply because we don't have an R here. All right, so we'll go ahead and just apply the screws that we were provided. And we want to go ahead and get this lined up here. And want to put it as high as possible. That's your measuring stick there. Of course, when the bubble's in the middle, if you've never used one of those, when the bubble's in the middle, all you're going to do is just take it and lock it into place to where you have it. And all I'm going to do is 
go ahead and put a little mark here. I just got a normal pin here. So we'll put it there and we'll go ahead and insert our screws here. I want to move it over a little bit more, so I'll go ahead and make the initial hole with the screw itself. And I'm going to go there, just push in a little bit. As you can see, I've made the indention there. And then on the opposite side, we'll just take it and press in just as we did there so I can see exactly where I want to screw these in. So and then screwing these in, let's see, go ahead and put this in place. Using my larger flathead again, this is just a force. You're only going to be concerned about the letters in which we had on our last thermostat, which are on the bottom here. That's the only letters you're going to be concerned about, which were the letters the wires were connected into. So we're going to go ahead and connect everything here. We're going to um, connect first starting with the Y, and we'll move on to connecting all the others as well. So the Y wire, we're going to connect into Y1. It's got a little hole in the side, so all we do is take it and just plug it in. Plug and play. And of course you may need to maneuver things, bend wires, all things of that nature. So don't be alarmed and you're just going to take it and plug it into the hole as you can see here. Now once you plug it in, you'll notice the tab here goes downward. So it folds into place to connect the wire. So now if I try to pull the wire out, it's connected in. To unattach, I can just take it and lift up. So that's the Y wire, which is going to be our yellow wire. Now the white wire, we're going to take and we're going to go ahead and move Put it into W here. There we go. Now, the wire will automatically, or the tab will automatically go down which shows you it's locked into place. We're going to take our blue wire and we're going to put it into C position. So that's engaged. Because we don't have a boiler system, anything of that nature, so we're going to take our red wire and we're going to put it into the RC tab. So red, there again. This is our power wire we're going to insert into the RC. Now there again, this was formerly known as R, but now it is the artist RC. So we've got our red, which we're going to put into RC, and of course our G wire, which is our green wire here, we're going to take that and we're going to put that into G. All right, so you just keep pushing until the tab locks itself into place. You can see my blues pop back up. So I'm going to go back, press again. All right, so now we're in. R is in. So everything's in, everything's down. 
And you can actually just pull the tab here, just kind of flip it a bit to make sure that's locked into place. As you can see, everything's in place. And so we've got our R, we've got our W, we've got our G, our C, and our Y all in place. And everything else here, you can just take and push back into the wall. And of course, you want your speaker on the bottom side. So it's right side up. So speaker is going to be at the very top. You can see your four tabs here. And all you're going to, you have the four tab insert or the clips there. And all you're going to do is just take it and apply this or put this directly onto the mount. Just make sure your pins are going directly into your pin hole. So we're just going to take and apply and press. And we're locked down. So the next thing we'll do now is go down and apply the switch. Mine is in my crawl space. So we'll go down and apply this uh, switch to turn the uh, HVAC system back on. And then of course this will light up and we'll go ahead and get everything connected. Once everything is connected, once everything gets connected, you will get it to where it says hi, and then everything fires up. Now, I didn't see that. I didn't show you that simply because I was downstairs turning on the power. So, hi there. We'll guide you through the process. Up process. Let's get started. And the only thing you're going to do there is just tap, and it asks, are we a homeowner or eco pro? We're homeowner, so we're going to go next. We've detected a wire connected to the RC terminal not RX terminal. Is this correct? Of course, yes it is. Yes, only RC is connected. And it shows to where we have connected wiring to the following terminals. And you can see G, C, Y, W, R, C. Or Y1, W1. Yes. We do not have humidifier, dehumidifier, dehumidifier or ventilator installed. So yes, no accessories installed. We want Fahrenheit instead of Celsius, and you can change it. This is a touchscreen, so you can change that at any time. What type heating do we have in our home? Furnace, so we're going to go next. How would you like your fan to be controlled by fan or thermostat? We're going to click thermostat, of course. So, of course, this gives you an opportunity to name your Ecobee. So what we'll do is go in and we are going to name it my Ecobee. Time to pair your Ecobee smart sensor. So what we're going to do now is pair it. We're going to pair it to the phone. We're also going to connect it to our smart sensor as well. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. We're going to pair smart sensor. Your smart sensor will keep important rooms comfortable by adjusting your thermostat based on the occupancy and temperature. And of course on the bottom, if you want to skip pairing, you can do so by simply skipping the pairing. So we want to go ahead and get this connected. And in getting it connected, you can see the tab there on the back. Just to see what's in here. So we're just going to pluck this off. And I would not be surprised if that is a battery. Yep, that's just a battery which is more or less the same size battery you use in your car key or your vehicle remote start or your vehicle remote key fob for your car. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull. So by pulling, now we've just engaged the power to our smart sensor here. We're going to go ahead and pair smart sensor. We've activated by pulling the tab. Now you can name your smart sensor as well. What we're going to name it, of course, main floor course, uh, upstairs, not going to name it that, so we're just going to keep it as smart sensor. 
which conference setting should your smart sensor be active for? Um, we're going to keep it for when we are well, away home and sleep. So we'll keep it in both. Comfort settings are preset temperatures your Ecobee therm smart, smart thermostat uses to keep your house comfortable and energy efficient throughout the day. So we're just going to leave it there. We're going to leave it on away home and sleep. View these tips for getting the best results from your smart sensor. Surface placement tips. And also you can see wall mounting tips. What we're going to do is surface pl placement. To get the most accurate reading, place your sensor around four foot high on a table shelf or other open surface away from exterior walls, windows, direct sunlight, away from drafts or vents. And a Knorr, uh, now we've got this connected. It's just simply time to connect the Wi-Fi or we're going to connect it to our phone. Connect to Wi-Fi, access your Ecobee remotely, view the weather forecast, and maximize energy settings. You can use your iOS system or device such as iPhone, iPad, iPod to simplify Wi-Fi setup. If you do not have an iOS device, select the Wi-Fi network option. All right. So now I have to go get my iPad, iPad, iPhone, or iPod. I'll go ahead and sit this down. And that would complete installing your Ecobee. Now I've walked you through a couple steps there, shown you which selections to make. So next thing you would do is connect it to your phone. That's where you go to your phone, you go to your Bluetooth settings, and you look for what would come up as Ecobee in your phone settings up under Bluetooth. Once you do that, tap there, and then you can come back and select whether you want to use your iPad, iPhone, anything such of that nature to go ahead and set up your system.